Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcon. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Red Corsair Chaos Space Marine. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now onto the video. So the first colour that we're going to use is Citadel Mephiston Red. We're going to be using this to do the pauldrons and the armour on the arms and the lower legs. And also the torso and the backpack, the power pack. The miniature's been sprayed with either the Citadel Chaos Black Spray or Halford's Matte Black Primer. One of the two of them. They are pretty much the same when you spray them on. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rust Grey. I'm going to use this to paint the helm, which is on the trophy spike at the back of his power pack there. Obviously, if you're not using a miniature with a trophy spike, but you don't want to do it rust grey, you can do all kinds of different colours for whichever chapter you want for stuff like this. I tend to do chapters of people that I know of the miniatures they collect so that it's a bit of a, an antagonism. Well, in this case, because this is just a single miniature, I'm doing it as the Space Wolves, just because I'm going to be painting up a few Space Wolves in the near future. So next up, we're going to be using some Rakarth flesh, we're going to use this to paint up the bony skull on the shoulder pad there on the pauldron. There's also a couple of little horns on the power pack, and also you've got the odd little, looks like claw or tooth growing from the armour trim on the back of the legs too. With that done, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Cantor Blue. I'm going to use this to do the loincloth. You don't really need to do this blue. This was just a bit of a tip towards the Astral Claws, which is who they used to be, or who most of them used to be. That's not really necessary. Next up, we've got a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour we're going to use to do the links of ammunition going up to the bolt gun. Also going to do the armour trim on his helm and on the skulls of the power pack too. I tend to do the little pommel on the knives this colour too. He's got a little bit of decoration on the bolt gun there as well. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I'm going to use this to do all of the silvery metallics. So you've got parts on the power pack, you've got these little tubes on the side of the helm, on the front of the chest, parts of the bolt rifle. So there's quite a bit to do with this colour. Like so. Next up we do a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do the belt and the little pouches that he has around his waist and also the leather strapping around the handle of his knife. I'm going to paint up this ammo box on his back as well because it looks as though it's made of material rather than any kind of metal or anything like that because it does appear to have a few little lumps and bumps on it. So I'm going to paint that up as though it's some sort of leather container with all the ammunition in. Now a very quick layer here, just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Araman Blue just to paint each of the eyes. And then we are going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black just to paint up the black areas on the miniature, which might have had a little bit of another colour go onto them. So we're going to continue with that, and then we are going to move on to Citadel Seraphim Sepia. 
this we're going to shade all of the bone on a miniature. So you've got the skull in the helm, you've got the skull on the shoulder pauldron there, and also on these little spikes coming out the top of the power pack. We've also got those little claws at the back of the legs too. Now we're going to use some Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. This is going to be to do the pouches and that big ammunition box on his back there, and also the belt. Now we're going to use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade, and this is going to be used to do all of the Retributor armor on a miniature. So you've got the gold parts on the bolter, bits on his helm, bits on his power pack, on the top of the knife there. Can you hear any noise in the background? There's a couple of little cats scamping about here. I'm going to use some Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade to do the eye lenses and also the Space Wolf Helm on the back of the trophy spike there. Now we're going to use one of the final shades, and it's going to be Citadel Druchy Violet. We're going to use this to do all of the red. There's quite a bit of this one to do. We'll give them that nice kind of vibrant red colour once we've started reapplying the colours back to them. Now we're going to use the final shade, and that is going to be Citadel Nuln Oil. Use this on all of the stuff that we use the Iron Hand Steel colour on. Like so. Now we're going to start returning colours to the miniature. We're going to use Citadel Mephist on red first. In this slightly dark piece of footage, fail to tinker with the exposure on this one. But don't worry, I'm more than make up for it later on with a slightly overexposed bit. So if you add the two together, they should have the right tones. So you're just reapplying the colour here, you want to leave the Druji Violet in the recesses and around the edges of the armour trim. Also underneath the legs and that kind of area, underneath the arms, so that it's not all bright. Now we're going to use the Evil Sun Scarlet on about 50% of the area that we've just used the Fist on Red on. Now we're going to edge highlight and do some final tiny little highlights with Citadel Wild Rider Red. If you wonder why I pronounce it like that, it's because I, for some reason I have great difficulty pronouncing it if I say it quickly. So we're just going to mainly do edge highlights with this and on a few areas where you've got quite a lot of the red exposed and highlighted, we're going to do a slight highlight on that area with it.
So now we're going to start highlighting the black. We're going to start with Vallejo German Grey. It's a very, very dark grey, this one. I do like this a lot. That's the cat scamping around and knocking over a box of sprues there. There's a bit more noise than usual. It's because we've just got two kittens and all they do is scamp about and knock everything over. But for highlighting with the German grey, you want to highlight the tops of stuff. You don't want the highlights going too far down the back or down the underside, just highlighting the top edges where the light will be catching them. To so the wedge highlights on the black, we're going to use Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. That brings out the highlights enough that you can see them and notice them, but without them being too bright that it takes away from the black and makes it look too light. So if you just do the edge highlights on all of the areas where you've got the black and the German grey, you'll be able to get those details looking smart. The only sections that I don't highlight with this is the seals between the battle plate. That's because I leave the German grey and the black. It's just those two colours, so it looks like that kind of dull, thick rubber. So next is going to be Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to start reapplying this to the gold, like you've done with the red and the black. You want to make sure that you're only highlighting the areas which be catching the light. So if it's on the underside, you're going to get less light on there. And you can leave that recolouring. Now we're going to use some Citadel Liberator Gold to highlight the Retributor Armour. You want to be covering about 50% of the area that you've used the Retributor Armour on when you've recolored the gold. Like you're building up the layers as you normally would with the armour plate or the normal colours, but using the metallics in that way too, so it gives you that true metallic metal look. Now we're going to mix a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold. I'm going to do some edge highlights and some highlighting on the larger areas of gold. This will give them a nice standout bright edge and also a nice gleaming colour on all of the gold areas. Now we're going to use some Citadel Rakarth Flesh to reapply colour to all of the bone areas and the claws and the spikes. And make sure you're leaving the Seraphim Sepia in all the recesses catching those areas which are on top and will be catching the most light. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Ushabti Bone. We're just going to highlight all of the Rakarth Flesh areas. So you're probably covering about 50% area as you did with the Rakarth Flesh. Now we're going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White with the Ushabti Bone. Now we're just going to highlight the areas that we've just highlighted. So you want to be doing about 50% of the area that you've just done on the Ushabti Bone with this mix. Like so. 
now going to move on to Citadel Iron Hand Steel once more. I don't tend to use too much of this, but this is just to go over a few little bits of the metallics where I've either caught them with another colour or just to give them a little bit of shine to break up the miniature. Because of the size of the power packs on these, I thought there was quite a bit of extra metallic, so give them a little bit of a shine to some of the areas, leaving the null oil in the recesses and then the areas that wouldn't be catching much light, and I'll just give you that little bit of extra brightness on there. Now I'm going to start working on the Space Wolf Helm, so we're going to go back to Citadel Rust Grey. We're reapplying this colour to the helm, making sure that you're leaving the shade in the recesses. Obviously if you're not doing this helm you can skip forward a little bit. It's going to be a couple of layers added on top of this, a few little bits of kind of dried blood and that kind of thing that I'm going to be putting on it. So you don't really need to Watch all this if you haven't got a Space Wolf Helm on the top. So we're going to mix a little tiny bit of Vallejo White with the Rust Grey. I'm going to start highlighting the helm, doing about 50% of the area that we've just done with the Rust Grey. You can see I'm just highlighting the top of that back ridge going around the helm, just so you've got the two shades on there, or the two tones, I should say. You've still got all that Drachenhof nightshade in the recesses, which gives you those nice shades between the different sections. And finally, we're going to add some more Vallejo white to the previous mix, just to lighten that up once more, and give us a nice colour to do some detailing and edge highlights on there. Doing these little highlights on the edges of stuff it does bring out the detail and allows you to see all the little features that you want to see on there. Saves all the clothes better than they can get into one. Like so. So now I'm going to do a little bit of weathering because it's been up there for quite a while, so we're going to use a little bit of a Grax Earth Shade. Just to get these streaks of maybe once dried blood on there. Bits of dirt and grime which is built up while it's been on top of those helms. Because I expect they don't polish them and keep them nice and fresh as they might do their own armour. So using the Agrath shade is a great way to just get that weathered and a little bit dirty and grimy. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Cowbird Crimson just to add a little bit of red to that area of where you're going to have the dry blood coming out. Put a little bit on the top of the trophy spike there as well so that's dried. If you wanted to do it more fresh, if you had like a bit more of a face in there rather than the skull, you could use a little bit of blood for the blood god. Put a little spot of that on the trophy spike as well. Now I'm going to work on the lenses, so we're going to use some Citadel Ariman Blue. Just reapply the colour there, so you're only going to be applying this to sort of the back two thirds of the lens, or the back bottom two thirds of the lens. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. I'm going to highlight about 50% of the area we've just done. So you're going to be doing that sort of like curve to the lens there. The main thing that you want to do is just leave a little area at the front of the lens, which is still shaded. So if you go too far forward with the highlights, you can use a little bit of Drachenhof Nightshade and just darken that down once more. So this has added a little bit more Vallejo white to the previous mix, and we're just going to do another highlight on there. Like so. And finally, we're going to use some pure Vallejo White to do a tiny highlight at the back of the lens and a tiny spot at the front of each lens just to give it some light reflection.
Now I'm going to use some Citadel Ballo Brown. I'm going to start working on all those areas that we did the leather earlier on. So we've got that ammo box on the back there. You've also got his belt and any pouches that are on his waist too. Small set of tiny paws trying to pull on my headphones wire at the moment. Like so. Next up, we're going to add some Citadel Rakarth flesh to the previous mix. And just do a few little highlights to the leather to give it that chafed and worn look. Now, I do two highlights to the leather usually, but it seems that one piece of footage has gone astray somewhere. So, once you've done this, if you want to add a little tiny bit more Rakarth flesh to it and do one final highlight on those leather sections, I'll just finish that off. And finally, working on the chapter badge on the shoulder, we're going to use Vallejo Black, or whichever black you use, and start to paint this on. I always start with the thumb and the base of the hand, get the rough shape of it there, and then start tweaking that with my fist on red and Evil Sun Scarlet. There'll be a full tutorial of this coming on Sunday. And that is the finished Red Corsair. Really happy with how it turned out. It looks a lot better than the ones that I used to have. So pleased with the overall results. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.